Welcome to our Sunday special, Christmas Craft Off. I hope you're ready to join with us and get crafty. Without further ado, let's meet our Craft Off contestants. So, to my left we have Mark from St Michael's. In the middle we have Mark from <laughs> St John's and St Mark's. And to my right we have David from St Paul's. Now each of our contestants is going to be competing to be today's Christmas Craft Off champion. And we've got three crafts which are going to test their skills to the max. So they will be making a signature sheep, a technical challenge origami angel, and a show-stopping nativity scene. We're also very lucky today to have our crafting expert who's going to be looking at their craft creations and judging them. Uh, so let's meet Hannah, who's going to be our crafting expert and judge today. My, my name is Hannah and along with Rachel, I have considerable crafting experience. So I can tell you that the level of expectation I have is very, very high. I'm told by some of the contestants that the level of crafting expertise is impossible to measure. So I'm sure along with myself, you are very excited about what we're going to see in the great Christmas craft off this afternoon. As well as watching our contestants get crafty, there's also the opportunity for you at home to join in and make a Christmas angel for yourself as we've got a short tutorial for you to follow along with at home for this one. And all you need for that is a piece of paper. Well, let's get started then. Our contestants are gonna have 10 minutes to make a signature sheep. Contestants, your time starts now. interesting start over here. Can you tell us um, tell us what you're doing? Well this could be some clouds in the sky um, but as you can see it's on a green background so that tells you that it's going to be a flock of sheep. So my plan is to reproduce Sean. Here's Sean. I'm going to cut out a nice face for him. Uh, put some eyes on. Put lots of wool as his fur. Give him some little feet. Sean will be good to go.
contestants, take your hands away from your glue stick. contestants your time is up that was a really good effort from everyone but let's go to our crafting expert Hannah now to see what Hannah thinks okay so here we've got our, our only 3d sheep of the um, craft off um, he's got a slightly unusual looking body but I'm very impressed with the sturdiness of the legs um, the mismatched eyes kind of give him a little jaunty characterful look um, and yeah, he's he's quite sturdy. Look, he can withstand a bit of a uh, uh, bit of an earthquake. So yeah, that's good. He's got a nice long tail, um, and I think I'm going to award this um, eight out of ten. Right. <laughs> so here we've got um, a number of sheep um, in various stages of development. Um, some of them are complete with uh, bodies, nice, really fluffy, round plump looking bodies, they look like a well-fed flock of sheep. Um, some of them have eyes, uh, some of them kind of have quite creatively made uh, eyes out of lolly sticks that were, were very carefully crafted. Um, unfortunately there's one down here that's just a body without anything else. But um, for the creativity and for the, um, for the number of sheep in a flock, this was an ambitious ask. He wasn't just making one sheep, he was going for an entire flock. So we'll give uh, seven out of 10 for this one. And then at the end here, we've got a kind of classic looking uh, Sean the sheep, made out of the good old paper plate, uh, very neatly executed. Um, it was clearly very carefully planned and um, very well, um, very well made. So I think we'll give that one eight out of 10. Right, we are on to our next craft, which is an origami angel. Our contestants have each got their piece of paper and their instructions, and they're gonna have 10 minutes to make those from the instructions. Uh, none of them have ever done this before, so it's all new, and we'll see what Hannah, our expert, thinks at the end. together existing crease lines. Yeah, that looks like a crease line to me. So I'm going to push that with that, I think. Mark, how much experience do you have with origami? Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, probably yeah. 0. Good when there's 18. Mark, tell us what, what experience have you had in the past that's enabled you to speed through this well, process? I spent three you? years in Japan studying origami. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's certainly <laughs> paying off now. It could win um, you the great Christmas plot. Well, thanks very much. I'm hoping it will. Yeah. <laughs> I did a really nice triangle, but I don't, I, don't think that's, <laughs> I don't think that's what we're aiming for. doing a star shape.
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop crafting. Our contestants are out of time. There was some excellent paper folding from everyone there. But let's see whose paper folding impressed Hannah the most. Okay, so, so on to our technical challenge. This was the 18 stage origami angel, which I have to say as a slightly um, experienced origami, uh, even for my standards, 18 steps on a piece of paper without a tutorial video is quite a serious ask. So well done to everybody. So first of all, we've got this one that is uh, almost completed here. I think perfectly completed. Oh, um, <laughs> looks really good from the front. <laughs> um, even has got some decoration on it. We've got, we've got some wings here. It stands up well. We've got a clear um, head here and a face and even maybe a little halo around it. So this is very, very well executed. Very um, neatly and crisply folded. So I think we'll have nine, nine marks for this one. Then we've got this one, which is a slightly different design. This one's wings look slightly, um, slightly scrunched up, but we've got some definite wings here. Um, we've got nearly got a head, not quite so uh, well defined, not quite finished off, but it does stand up. Um, looks quite relaxed and leaning back. So I think we'll give this one um, we'll give this one seven. And then, <laughs> this, is, this is our final uh, angel. Um, very original in its look. Um, I'm slightly concerned about its legs and um, its wings uh, look as though they, perhaps he's not quite fully fledged this one. His, his wings are still folded at the back. Um, but again, he's standing up. Um, he doesn't look like a flat piece of paper anymore. So we'll, we'll give this one um, seven as well, I think. Well, the time has come for you at home to have a go at making your own angel. So we'll see how it compares to our contestants. Um, all you need is a piece of paper. A4 is fine. And we'll just need a pair of scissors for the beginning bit. So what we need to do first is make this paper into a square. And you might know how to do that already, but if you don't, this is what you do. Now you can unfold your piece of paper and you'll have a nice fold down the middle. And we're now gonna fold it diagonally the other way. So like this. Okay, next job, open it out, turn your paper over, and we fold it in half again, but this time uh, from this corner to that corner. So then open it out again. Now we are on to step four, which is the tricky one that our contestants were struggling with. So for this one, all you're going to do is if you have it this way up, so with your sort of fold that way, and um, we just need to sort of poke it up in the middle, so you've got a bit of a point at the top, and then we're going to push these two sides together on either side, so like this. And then you'll be not left with a nice triangle. Okay, next job is that we are gonna fold down these sides. So you just take the top layer and you're gonna fold it to, to the middle of your triangle like this. And then you're gonna do the same on the other side. Okay. 
Brilliant. So then we want to turn our angel over to the other side. And we want to fold these flaps in. So what you want to do is fold it up like that. Fold it up. And then if you pull up the top layer, you can sort of tuck them just inside. Okay, we're going to make our wings now. And what you need to do is to fold these corners up to the top. So along that central line again. Okay, hopefully yours looks something like this. What we've got to do now is we're going to take this wing and just push it over a bit and then you can see you've got a crease line there we want to fold this edge down to this line here like this and then turn it back over and we'll do the same on the other side so pop that over and you can see you've got a crease line then you want to fold that to the line in the middle. Give that a really good fold. Open it out and then we can uh, sort of open those bits out to the side. And if you look from the front, you can see it's starting to take shape now. Okay, the next thing to do is to take these bits here, this bit, and again, we are going to fold it into the middle. Like that and we'll do the same on the other side okay so that's the back of your angel uh, next thing we need to just turn it over and we're gonna make the angels head so as you can see this bit here is gonna be the head so we'll just fold that forwards um, like that getting quite hard to fold now because the paper's so thick so you kind of fold it forwards and down like that and then you're just gonna bend it back uh, but leaving a tiny bit of space so you've got sort of like a bit of a neck there it's meant to be the neck and then that can sit up straight right we're really nearly there now next job is to round off the wings so they're looking a bit flat at the moment so we want to just bend them around our fingers and that'll give them a nice curve so you can see one's looking good already I'll just do the same on the other side so you want to hold it all together at the back while you do that so they don't come apart okay so we've got our wings we've got our head and the last thing to do is just to round off the dress at the bottom. So if you put your fingers inside and you can just bend that round so that it's, again, so it's 3D, not flat anymore. Okay, I think that's looking good. So if I pop that angel on the table and there you have it, one origami angel. Well, it's time for our showstopper now. And for today's showstopper, our contestants will be making a nativity scene. It needs to be absolutely fabulous. They've got a whole range of different supplies. And let's see what ideas they've got and whose will be the best. Contestants, you have 20 minutes. Your time starts now.
So Mark, this is your showstopper. It's really got to wow the judge. How are you feeling right now? Not very good. Because they don't give me better points. <laughs> <laughs> So you're using half of a toilet roll for baby Jesus' um, body? In these Covid times, only half a toilet roll for uh, things like this, yeah. Mark, what would it mean for you to be the craft off winner? Well, to be honest, that's not very likely, but <laughs> but it would be a turn up for the books. It would be the underdog coming to the fore. Uh, well, uh, it would mean everybody. It would mean everything, really. Um, it would make my day, my week, my month, and probably my year here as well. So um, we'll see how it goes. And David, what would it mean to you to be the craft off winner today? Well, it's it's more about not losing than it is about winning. Uh, at the end of the day, I think. Craft in general is the winner. working on now Mark? Well, I was just completely injured but I'm not, sh I'm not sure a print stick was really made for major construction because it uh, wise man. They're looking good. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time is up, contestants. Hands away from the glue sticks. an excellent effort from our yeah. contestants. I think they pushed themselves to the max for that and we really did see their skills coming through. Uh, so that is the time up for the showstopper and we're going to go to our judge, to Hannah now, to see what she thought. Well, I am quite impressed with the neatness of the structure of the stable here um, and, and the slanted roof is very impressive. Um, I'm quite entertained by the jaunty angle that some of the headdresses are being worn uh, in, in this one. Um, but we've got lots of characters here. We've got a very impressive, I'm wondering if I can lift it out without breaking it. Very delicate, but very impressive little manger here. Rather impressive, very good. Um, I'm, there's a good use of stickers and different um, size stars in the sky here um, and I particularly like this kind of peacock fan head gear on this uh, glittery sparkly character here. In, in the middle here we've got a very rustic and original looking uh, stable. Um, I'm very impressed with the engineering of the lolly stick people. Um, and the way that things are fixed into the top of uh, the roof. Um, yeah, I think we've got a Mary and a Joseph. They look a bit chilly, 
they're not very well clothed. Um, the shepherds are looking quite authentic with their slightly scruffy headdresses. Um, and, but luckily, everybody should be kept warm by the um, rather large number of sheep in this stable. So, so uh, the lack of clothing is made up for by the warmth of the animals, I hope. Um, over here, we have a very, again, very impressive uh, stable. I like the kind of slope of the, the roof. Um, we've got lots and lots of characters in there. I was uh, very slightly confused by how baby Jesus was going to be made out of half of the toilet roll, but I have to say that's a very creative use of um, limited resources to make a very good baby Jesus in, and fit, fitting really nicely into his manger. And um, yes, I think we've got all the characters over there. I'm slightly disturbed by the angle of the wings of the angel that come out of the top of his head. Um, I think they might be uh, misconstrued as ears if you didn't know who he was. But other than that, a very good effort. I'm going to award this one um, eight out of 10. This one uh, seven out of 10. And I think this one as well, eight out of 10. Now, before we find out who today's Christmas Craft Off champion is gonna be, we're gonna take a quick look at the true story of the first Christmas from the Bible with the help of some of these lovely crafts. And Lydia is gonna read the short passage from the Bible to us. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. As we look at our world and the mess that COVID-19 has made this year, we might wonder, is there any hope for this world? As we struggle with fear and worries in our own lives at this time, we might wonder, is there any hope for me and for my loved ones? Well, as we come towards the end of a difficult year, I hope it will be a great comfort to us to know that the Christmas story cries out in answer to those questions. Yes, there is hope. Take a couple of minutes to think about this true story from the Bible that Lydia just read for us. Today we've been making sheep because shepherds play an important part in this bit of the story. On this particular night, shepherds were keeping an eye on their sheep in the fields around Bethlehem, much the same as any other night, until a terrifying angel appeared with a very important message for the shepherds. The angel said he had good news. Now those are words we haven't been hearing too often recently, hey? Well, good news. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So this angel was sent by God to announce a special birth. The birth of a king, in fact, because that's what that word Messiah means, God's promised king. A king to lead God's people, but also a saviour. Of course, we probably know that this saviour king was baby Jesus. Now, there are many brilliant stories of Jesus in the Bible when he was much older, healing various diseases. But always the sickness Jesus was most interested in curing was sin. The Bible tells us that each of us has sinned, which means we've said to God in our hearts, shove off God, I'm in charge, no to your ways. And sin is like a disease that contaminates and ruins our whole world. It's our biggest problem, the thing we most need saving from. And that's why the birth of this saviour king is such good news because the one who can save us is here. There is hope. And not just for the people living in Israel back then, 
but for all people, even for us, certain hope of a cure for our biggest problem. The angel told the shepherds that they would find this baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So let's take a look now at our nativity scene. I wonder if you've ever thought how weird it is that Jesus, God's saviour king, was born here, in some kind of stable, probably amongst animals, because we know Jesus was laid in a manger, which is a kind of food box for animals. This royal birth doesn't look very spectacular, does it? But don't be fooled, because the very fact that it doesn't look spectacular actually is spectacular. See, Jesus in his birth, life and death humbled himself. That means he made himself much less than what he was and thought of others much more than he thought of himself. And you want to know why? Well, it was because of his great love for us. He came down to our level, identifying even with the poorest of the poor, because that's the kind of king he is. Not a pampered prince, but a servant king, whose ultimate purpose was to give his life in our place, a cure for our sin. I imagine some companies will be making a mint from the COVID vaccine when it's ready. In contrast, Jesus became poor to bring the cure for sin to all of us. So as we celebrate what could be a difficult and certainly a different Christmas this year. Let's remember and find hope and joy in this wonderful story of the sheep, the angels, the nativity scene and the Saviour King. I think it's time to find out who our Christmas Craft Off winner is going to be today. Well, the standard has been really high this afternoon and the judging has been very, very difficult. I've been very impressed with the uh, creativity and the ingenuity and the enthusiasm of all of our crafters. But in the end, we did have to choose one winner. So the winner of the Christmas Craft Off 2020 is uh, Mark Holdaway. So Mark, here is the crafting crown uh, and a prize there for you to take away and enjoy as you uh, continue your illustrious crafting <laughs> career. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. We do hope you've had fun. It's been great to have you with us. Do check out some of our other Advent videos on our YouTube channels. There's a new video premiering every day of Advent, so always something new to watch. And we'll be back next Sunday with our next Sunday special. So we hope you can make it.